Jetzt mal Hand aufs Mainboard. Ein guter Spiele-PC, der muss schnell sein, das ist klar. Er muss leise sein, das ist auch klar, aber er muss doch auch gut aussehen, finde ich zumindest, weil ich sehe den PC doch ständig fast 25 Stunden am Tag. Fragt sich nur, was bedeutet gut aussehen denn überhaupt? Wie muss ein Gehäuse, wie muss ein Mainboard, ein Netzteil designt sein, damit wir sagen, hey, das sieht gut aus und hat natürlich eine tolle Performance. Und hilft es denn dabei selbst, Gamer zu sein, wenn man solche Komponenten für Gamer anbietet? Darüber spreche ich heute mit Johnny Ho, dem Gründer und CEO von NCXT. Johnny, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Johnny, in 2024, you're celebrating the 20th anniversary of NCXT. Congratulations. Thank you. 20 years, that's uh, an amazingly long time. I can relate because I've been here at GameStar for more than 20 years and... Wow, looking back at the things that happened, it it feels like having started here in the Stone Age. What are you What are you most proud proud of in the uh, in the history of NCXT since then? Oh, yeah, there's a lot to be proud of. But speaking of 20 years, it's it, at this point it's basically half of my lifetime that I've been working on NCXT. Uh, I, I guess I could say I, I'm I'm really proud of uh, really like the the culture we built. Uh, I think. People who come to NZC can really feel the authenticity in the company. Obviously, we've made a lot of good products and design and changes, but really, mm -hmm. like uh, I think we've stayed really focused on our kind of original purpose of serving this PC gaming community, and that's 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 been something I've been really proud of. Right? Would you say that your experience in gaming and in business is a perfect fusion, like Vegito? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> Vegeta and Goku. Go, uh, I, I would say my experience. I, I, I feel very fortunate to be working on something that I think I'm okay at, not bad at, and and but I'm also passionate. At. Like I, I feel very fortunate to be able to wake up and work on a thing that I really love. Yeah, great. That's just great. Yeah. Uh, we also know you're a big fan of Dragon Ball. Yes, <laughs> that's why I asked. And yes. you started out as a PC gamer as well. So because, before we get to the business side of things and to the NCXT hardware uh, side of things, let's talk about your gaming background for a little bit. Can you still remember the very first video game you ever played? Yeah, if it's outside of PC, I, I mean, I, I played a lot of games on the Famicom, right? So there's like a, you know, like obviously the super early days of Street Fighter. And I played, you know, or back in the day when arcades were very popular, I played, played a lot of arcade games. But on the PC gaming game, PC games I played probably, that I can think of maybe, um, there's a game, really old game called like A10 Tank Killer. It's like a fighting slim game. Ooh, yeah. 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 And mm -hmm. then I... I'm a big fan of adventure games, so uh, Monkey Island is like a huge, like I still, it's still one of my favorite games today, and it, like Guybrush Threepwood is like the, one of the best characters in my opinion, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look behind you, a three-headed monkey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Stuff like that. Oh, you're very fortunate because I remember the very first game I ever played was the worst Pac-Man version in the history of mankind <laughs> on the Atari VCS which could only display one ghost at a time or per frame. So the four ghosts were always flickering the whole uh -huh. time. And I was like, is, 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 is this broken? Uh, I should be switching to PC gaming. Yeah. That's <laughs> It reminds me of when the, the, the internet speeds were really slow and you had to like predict where people were going because like, <laughs> it was, there was a, always a delay for when before you fired some, something, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, quite, uh, quite like that, yeah. I, I guess. Uh, I imagine uh, the workday of a CEO nowadays is very busy. Are you still finding the time to play games yeah um especially like right now like on a business trip <laughs> i like i loaded up a ton of games because i have downtime because i'm away from family which i'm obviously a little bit bummed about but uh right now i'm catching up on boulder's game trying to push hard to finish through the game because Ooh. it's a It's a game that requires a lot of hours, so mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm, I'm almost there. I'm Act three, Act three right now, so hopefully I'll finish before my trip. Oh, cool! What are you playing? Uh, what you need? I'm playing an elf. Yeah, elf, okay. Elf, uh, thief. Are you, are you a nice character or a nasty one? So I usually, <laughs> I usually. <laughs> I usually do the first play nice character, but I will always do a second play as a evil character. It's, it's, it's a, that's a very nice thing about open world games. You get to do the things you probably shouldn't be doing in real life. <laughs> <laughs> right, I would, I would never do that, of course. No, of course yeah, we, we never uh, nuked Megaton in Fallout 3 no. <laughs> just to see what happens. What happens yeah. no, you, you would never do that as a gamer. I've also heard you've played a lot of League of Legends yeah. back in the day. Are you still into that? Or? Um, I was playing League of Legends and then The past couple of years, I played some Wild Rift. I haven't actually picked it up, but uh, yeah, like last year, I was still playing. I played mostly mid, you know. Yeah, yeah. I played Zeke for a bit, and then I played 
Diana, yeah. Yeah. So Aram just yeah, yeah, yeah. cramming all the people into the mid and yeah, yeah. yeah having very fast like burst fast uh, damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Are there any games, any upcoming games you're looking forward to right now? I'm looking forward to the Star Wars game, the Open Ooh. World Outlaws. I uh, crossing my fingers it, it goes well, but uh, I was very surprised by how how good the the Harry Potter game was, though mm -hmm. the Hogwarts, Hogwarts Legacy. I was very surprised that was like turned out way better than than anyone was expecting. I think, yeah, absolutely, and it was one of the biggest sales hits as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, which is great. Last year. Yeah, absolutely. As we talked about, you founded NCXT 20 years ago in 2004. What motivated you to found the company back then? Yeah, uh, so I had prior to that point, I had, I had actually been doing some design and consulting work for some companies in the industry, and the right that was right around the time there was this a very popular brand. I mean, they're still popular today, uh, called Alienware. You know, and uh, Alienware offer these really amazing machines. It was the first time I think people imagined computers not as a beige box, and that really inspired me. And I was thinking, okay, like. Well, I couldn't afford one because <laughs> back in the day, the, the Alienware's were already very expensive. They were like three, four thousand. So if you just just think about today's today's money and in inflation. It's an insane amount of money, right? So, um, so we I had done some done some work that was very successful. So I was like, why not try maybe to do my own design, but like the opposite to an alien. So the first product we did was uh, was something called like the. NZXT Guardian. Right, I remember. And then if you like, okay, what's the opposite of aliens? So it's this <laughs> idea of like robots fighting, maybe aliens. So we even ran an ad that had like our case, but then it was like some maybe alien products like in the <laughs> battlefield and stuff like that. Uh, and that. And we got a reaction from that, which was very funny. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, what did they do? They ran the, uh, the, the opposite <laughs> ad. <laughs> higher quality though. I think they had a bigger budget than we did. Yeah. But that's, that's very cool. Starting out with uh, this kind of friendly competition yeah, yeah, yeah. right from the beginning. And I, I actually remember the, uh, the very first NCXT Guardian case with this, you know, this, as you said, this robot Gundam-like, yeah. also It looked to me. It looked a bit like a Protoss from StarCraft because I was very, uh, very much into StarCraft as a yeah. strategy gamer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, like, wow, okay, how did they come up with that? Yeah. But yeah, yeah it, it was. It had like all of the gaming elements like mushed together. I, which I don't know if it was a good design or not, but it was like trans part Gundam, part Transformer. They actually had like Knight Rider lights in the front too. Ooh. Yeah, and then on the side there was like a little dragon on the emblem, and then there was like a sword with fire anyway it was just totally ridiculous <laughs> and um but you know try not to judge me i was 19 at the time so you know like yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, so young i mean uh be honest did you did you really design this to sell it to people or did it design it uh, did you design it for yourself oh like totally for the first like i would say even up five years if most of the time i was just like it was very much about designing for for myself right like the found <laughs> the founding of the business was like Just trying to serve a need that I didn't think the market was serving. Mm -hmm. So like uh, I was just surprised that like oh so other people maybe felt the same. So we we managed to sell quite a bit of that Guardian case, and that was like the beginning of the business. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, as you said, uh, there were people who loved uh, the design of the Guardian, and there were also others who quite didn't. Yeah. Um, what did you learn about community feedback back then, right in the beginning? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I would say like I definitely learned the PC gaming community is very passionate, right? <laughs> That's true. Uh, it, they've, you can pass it in both ways, love and hate type of relationship always with PC gaming community. Um, but I think what I also learned from that is like, I think if you if you design something, I think it's good to design something that people have strong opinions about. Then you can capture attention, right? Um, and at the time, you know, NZXT for a long time, we didn't have any marketing budget really. The, we intentionally designed the products in a way that it could attract. Op uh, opinion and strong opinions from people so yeah i mean over time as we've had to reach more pc gamers we've toned down and probably I mean, nowadays our designs are a lot more minim minimalist right so yeah mm -hmm. is that also what has changed most on the pc gaming you know hardware market since the day i mean it has evolved quite a lot what were the most important changes and challenges for ncxt since then Yeah, I mean, we have obviously like business challenges growing the business, like as always, scaling the business from mm -hmm. nothing to what it is today. Uh, but like, I think the PC industry um, as a whole, I think for for a while, I think a lot of people didn't believe the PC platform was going to go anywhere, right? Like this idea of PC gaming is dead, right? Uh, and today it's obviously thriving. And that was something I think the PC gaming 
industry pushed through. I think streaming helped, Twitch helped a lot, esports helped a lot. You have a lot of live games now that are very popular on the PC platform, right? So um, I'm very optimistic about PC uh, gaming as a platform. And as far as NZXT goes, we're always trying to find a way to kind of serve this community, right? And you're totally right. All the PC gaming is dead. Yeah. Uh, articles and yeah during the years, well, they've been proven wrong. <laughs> yes, I think so. I think so, finally. <laughs> I'm very glad it's still around. Yes, me too. Absolutely. Um, over the years, NCXT has expanded its uh, product line uh, from cases to within the PC, like, you know, power supply units or uh, main boards, even, and to outside the PC with, like, headsets, mice, and keyboards. How did that, uh, that expansion happen? What, uh, what motivated you to, to expand in these areas? Yeah, I mean, um, if you look at the history of the company, we did just cases really for probably 10 years, mm -hmm. right? And then, um, you know, when then we got into coolers, which we're known for as well. Um, I mean, I, I think from this from the get go, and ZXT had always, ima always imagined the day would come where we could make the entire we, what we like to say is like with the entire gaming desk, the entire experience. But it was a matter of like making sure you were taking your time and doing things right, you know, before you got into these categories. And I think right now it makes sense because we're finally able to. It wasn't like the, we wanted to build a gaming P computer case company day one. We wanted to build a PC gaming hardware company, but it took time before you could be ready to invest in the categories and uh, expand beyond beyond your core, your core competencies, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, now the PC gaming hardware market is pretty crowded. Uh, nowadays, what are you doing to make NCXT stand out? What's your DNA? Yeah, I mean, the thing that doesn't change about NCXT, and I think we're known for it, is I think there's this there's this element of design that's that's that we're known for, and we try to bring this consistency across every single category category we're in. You know, um, we build some software that integrates across our categories, the NCXT Cam, um, and I think nowadays in certain regions around where we also offer like a direct consumer experience where you can purchase a complete PC from us, right? So uh, what we try to do is really offer a complete experience right uh, from what you know about the brand to even when you have to serve if you hopefully not but if you when you do have to service it like a really great uh, end customer experience as well so we see all those things being part of the brand experience and i can absolutely relate to starting the pc building service because I've never been a big PC builder myself. Have you? Have you been a PC builder back then? Yeah, yeah, the uh, absolutely, wow. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I actually did like a last summer jobs building PCs for. for oh really? For, for, yeah, like you can actually make pretty good money for, like helping people build PCs. Ah, like, uh, okay, I'll take a time traveling machine and tell yeah. my <laughs> former self, my, myself back then. Not anymore about though. That. Yeah, now now it's hard. I, now I, I nowadays I still build once a year because I I'm, because we still make cases and coolers. So I build once a year just to make sure we're uh, continuing to level up the game, right? So yeah. yeah. I'm I'm very thankful for PC building services like the one NCXT is offering because I've I, let's say this, I've never been a big PC builder myself, but I have built PCs, but only those I wasn't gonna use myself. So I build a PC for my girlfriend and then it's her problem if it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Something <laughs> like that. And I've never had the patience for cable management. Yes. You know, yes, the, yeah. oh. it's, it's very therapeutic though. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Thing, yeah. yeah, it's like meditation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. to say. Yeah. Truly so. I know that for many people it is so important to have a PC that is really standing out among others. You know, I was at a, a big LAN party event here in Germany a few months ago, and there were hundreds of people in a, in a huge dark hall sitting there, and you could see the RGBs, LEDs glowing back then, and everybody was presenting their rig and being proud of it. So is that, is that a community you are kind of... How, how do you address this community of really enthusiastic PC rig building fans? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... I think it's part of the reason why PC gaming is is, is so much so different than mm -hmm. other types of gaming platforms, right? Like when you get an Xbox or your PlayStation or a Nintendo Switch, it's it looks like that. Yeah, it's, right. it's always going to look like <laughs> it. You can put a skin on it, you know, and then it can make it a little bit different. But with PC gaming, you can do so much more, right? Like so many cases to choose from, coolers and stuff like that. RGB. Now there's screens you can put inside your your products. Like we have a, we have a product where you can put LCD screen on your water cooler. Yeah. Like 
people really take um, this idea of personalization or expression to to a next level, right? And because they're very proud of these machines they work on. So it's it's one thing we spend a lot of time thinking about too is how to enable customers to to express themselves even more because I think that's one of the reasons why you build your own PC, right? Um, because the reality is you can also buy a standard PC yeah. but from and from one of the many brands around the world, right? But why you build your own, why you get, get into PC gaming, why you have a glass, you want to see inside of those are all different reasons, right? Yeah. And you uh, mentioning the Kraken water cooling unit is right on the point, I think, because it got this small display screen for GIFs and stuff like that. And did you know that people on YouTube were putting Dragon Ball themed GIFs on, yeah, that, yeah. on the yeah. thing? Yeah, me included. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? I have a, yeah, I have a <laughs> photo of a uh, gif of Su Goku Super Saiyan behind mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So uh, what is your approach when it comes to designing new products today? How is this process working for you? Yeah, we, we have an internal process kind of around uh, this whole idea of a DNA. Right? Mm -hmm. And DNA, right? Just like everyone, this DNA that flows through all our products and, you know, whether it's like minimalism or particular shapes or um, you know, that, that drives all our product design. So design at NZXT is uh, completely centralized. Mm -hmm. So um, the head of design reports into me. So we, uh, I, it's it's one way of making sure things are consistent. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's one of our core, core jobs. And I would say it's like, a little bit unique right, to have design reporting to uh, the CEO because often design is sometimes it's outsourced even, right? So. so cool. So you're still involved in product development from the from the very start. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. I, I actually found um, I actually found it's the, the thing I keep going back to and I probably spend like maybe 40, 50 percent of my time still involved in product. It's a uh, it's area where I, I think we're a product company at the core. It's one thing we got to make sure we do right. So is a new product going to go through many design iterations during this process? Is there, is there a lot of back and forth between you and the designers? Um, I, well, this, this is actually one of the reasons we set up a DNA. Well, having a DNA helps to provide uh, some sort of guardrails, right? So what well, we like to say that we, don't, we do design, we don't do art. Art is like the world's, you know, whatever, anything can be possible, right? And we want to make sure there's some consistency, right? So we have a DNA which allows for designers to do work without having to always check me. Hey, does this fit in ZXT's design DNA? Well, there's like a whole guide, guardrails and guidelines for how you do design. So mm -hmm. that helps with the process. So it's, so it's not iterative so much. So we, I think we, 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 we do a pretty good job of getting through design. Um, I'm mostly checking for just the overall product, right? The design, the quality, the user experience, you know, et cetera, yeah. Right, one design I remember in particular was the H6 Flow. We're going to talk yeah. about the H7 Flow in a minute, but the H6 Flow had this, you know, this missing corner with the angled fan. Yeah. How did you come up with that? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, uh, one of the things that we care about, of course, is performance, mm -hmm. right? And um, what we, we noticed is with all these dual chamber fans that with the, with the side intake, um, the fans were blowing directly at a glass, right? And we're like, well, what if we turn these fans so the fans didn't have to make an effort to turn, the air doesn't turn on its own, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. And then that then gave us this opportunity to do um, the fans angled on the right side, yeah. And like, there's this thing people don't notice, I think, but when you angle the fans on the right side, it actually creates this uh, illusion that it's actually a little bit thinner. So um, I think it gives it a better visual appeal. But it was really, really rooted in trying to improve the performance of the product and the graphics card, the graphics card thermals, right? Mm -hmm. Now at Computex uh, 24, you are going to announce or you have announced new products, and we'll be talking about those in a minute. Yet I have to ask first: Do you remember what it was like to attend your very first Computex back in the day after you founded the company? Yeah, uh, I mean, so certainly it's the first time you're out there and you have some media's coming. So, yeah. uh, I mean, I don't think it's that different to you're always nervous when the media is coming to to check out your product and you're, you're curious on what people are going to say. Um, yeah, I mean, more or less, I don't think it's, it's changed much. You know, Computex is one of the good events where it's really focused on computer hardware, right? And it's not nothing else but computer hardware. It's one of my favorite, favorite shows to go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But back then you were just... This one new guy between all those giants, maybe that existed back then, was yeah. it was exciting, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was it, it more anxiety and uh, probably being more nervous than exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, today NCXT is one of the most well-known brands uh, in this area. Are you still excited when you're announcing new products? Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. And I still get anxious and uh, nervous. Uh, I've 
have, I have less nightmares, I think, nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I used to get very nervous the day before a launch. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, let's talk about the new H7 Flow and H7 Flow RGB uh, for a minute. I think they're very interesting designs because they look very compact and you know minimalistic, but still offering maximum cooling performance uh, with up to 10 fans. I think, how did you achieve that? Was it hard to cram all those fans in there? Yeah, and again, like going back to kind of what I shared earlier on H6, um, this was a result of us really trying to drive better performance, right? Mm -hmm. And someone, I, I think one of someone, uh, someone on the engineering team had actually mentioned like, hey, what if we found a way to get some intake onto into the GPU, right? Because today the traditional ATX tower has a shroud, mm -hmm. right? And the shroud obviously completely blocks the ability to intake air. And uh, I actually remember the first time they brought it up to me, I thought, like, what a terrible idea. This case, this case won't, <laughs> this will look terrible, <laughs> right? Like a power supply flipped on its side. And of course, our design and engineer was like, they, they give us some time, you know, they came back with the design and I think it, it looks amazing. And it's, you can almost like not unsee this anymore. And when you see the power supply shroud now, you're like, what? Why is it there? It's taking, it's taking away the ability to to add these intake fans at the bottom, right? And which has uh, really improved the performance of a traditional ATX case without being super wide like the H6, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one innovation in particular are the F-series single frame yeah. RGB fans that are being shipped with the H7 Flow RGB. Well, how how did you come up with that design, and what's it? Uh, what is its advantage? Well, as we know, like there's been a lot of uh, a big growth around mod these modular fans, right? Um, while the modular fans are nice, I mean, we really fundamentally thought, like, if you didn't mind having the same branded fans, which we noticed most people were doing, they mm -hmm. wanted to buy it from the same brand, then why not we would just literally integrate it for you versus you even having to struggle with the, whether there's the magnetic or clips or stuff like that. It's literally just you pop it in there, four screws, and you're done, right? I mean, you could probably assemble one of these fan systems in less than five minutes, right? <laughs> right? Which even, even with the modular fans, I don't think you could do that fast. Yeah, that is amazing because on the one hand, I'm a really huge fan of PC cooling because I'm living on the top floor of my building and especially during the summer, it gets so hot in my apartment that you got about, I know, 36 degrees Celsius, which is about 96 Fahrenheit, wow. I guess. And uh, cooling is everything then. So... Everything that um, that makes cooling the PC easier and easier to handle is pure gold. Because on the other hand, I had an old PC with a cooler that was always rattling, you know, um, because it was it, it, a screw got loose or something uh, broke uh, with it. But I was too lazy to to change it and uh, to replace it with a new one. And then I always had to pound my case for it to be quiet <laughs> for half an hour to, to settle again. And uh, then the rattling began anew and uh, it became kind of this ritual to always pound my PC. So I'm always glad there are new technical solutions for getting those fans right. Yeah, yeah. And it's incredible even after 20 years how much there's room there is still left to improve in PC gaming hardware. Absolutely. And there's also a new NCXT control hub Yep. for well controlling uh, those fans. What what does it do? What's new about it? Yeah, so our, our the, the great part about the fans we just shared was uh, if you don't want to use NZXT cam, you can plug them directly into the motherboard. Mm -hmm. So there's no like a walled, eco, walled off garden, if you will, right? It's just open, right? Which is, I think, the spirit uh, really of PC gaming, right? <laughs> you can pick whatever you want. Um, now, if you do want the cam experience and if you want to do an even better job when it comes to wire management, then the controller hub allows you to connect all the unibody fans to one controller. And it's just like the single cable down to the motherboard and there's power too. But uh, it really allows you to clean that up even further and allows you to use CAN to do all control of the, these, these fans. Yeah, and talk about cable management. That sounds so much easier for people like me yeah. who hate yeah. it. Yes, <laughs> yes. And the fan... The fans are the worst, right? Yeah, uh, especially when you have this this many fans, it's it's really it's really challenging. Yeah, yeah. But a very very clever solution you found there, and you can also go uh, into zero RPM mode to have them very very quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You can set your fan curves obviously once it's under a certain temperature load to to have them not be on. Right. Right. Um, switching to the power supply side of things, uh, you're overhauling your whole product line to be ready uh, for the future. Uh, what's important there? What's important on the uh, for the future of power supply in your PC? Uh, 
Well, I mean, right now it's, it's obviously the ATX, ATX3 standard. So mm -hmm. finally, we've launched our whole new line with ATX3 standard. We've also launched a flagship uh, power supply now. Uh, the, I think the C1500, mm -hmm. and uh, that will like for for really the high end uh, high, high 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 end customer, and you know NZXT has really been very well known in the case and cooler space, and right now we're taking a really serious look on power supplies, and we're we have a whole revamp line as part of this, yeah, and these yeah. these have been in the work for a while now, and uh, they're ground up designed uh, brand new from NZXT. Yeah. yeah, one thing I find uh, very interesting about the C1500 uh, uh, Platinum is that it can run in completely silent mode with no voice up to 60% loading. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's part of, that's, that's a great part of having a high wattage power supply, right? Because yeah. most of the time your PC is not needing to utilize that much load, so most of the time the power supply will actually just be off, yeah. Yeah, and having a quiet PC is worth quite a lot. Yeah, so between the fan, the power supply, right, really, uh, you can have a pretty, pretty quiet PC yeah, yeah. When, you're not, when, you're not in, when you're not in game mode, right? Or if you're playing a game that, that's not requiring a high draw on the power. Mm -hmm. The C850, the C1000, and the C1200 Gold will also be available in black and white. Yes, that's right. From now on, what's important about giving the players, uh, the gamers, this choice? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're seeing a lot of white cases now, a lot of white coolers, and power supply. Traditionally, you would say it's a it it it's a product you don't see very often, especially mm -hmm. in a lot of NZXT cases. The power supply is actually hidden mm -hmm. behind the motherboard or the power supply shroud. Um, but I think when every single component in your PC is white and your power supply is black, I think there is going to be a need. And we specifically designed the power supply to make sure there's like, to minimize the amount of black parts because there's products on the market that are white but not quite white. So we made, we wanted to make sure this was as many white parts as possible, especially for the folks with like, I mean, OCD or, you know, like they needed everything to be white. <laughs> I think this helps to solve solve a challenge there, yeah. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big fan of the white uh, design because it always seems more science fiction-like to me, you know, like the space shuttle or something like this. Yeah. I love yeah. having white gear. Yeah, we've definitely come a long way from beige computers to, to now being with white and black and RGB, yeah. Absolutely. Now, talking about coming a long way without telling us anything secret, what do you think are the next 20 years going to be like for NCXT? Anything, are there any hardware trends in particular that you're watching? Anything you're particularly excited about? I think from NCXT, you'll, what you'll see is us continue to work on things like consistent design across, like, across all our categories, continue to like raise the bar uh, on design. You know, I think you'll see us try to improve the user experience as you have all these products on your desk between the mice, the keyboard, the computer, the monitor, and all this stuff, right? I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, beyond like those things, uh, I I mean, I think it, I think VR is still interesting in, in, in PC gaming. Um, um, I think there's a question on whether or not content will, will come. Mm -hmm. um, But you know we we're we're really we're we we try not to predict the future, right? And I think we try to solve like the problems we see existing today. And I think there's still plenty of things to do there, including things like you know PC gaming is still fairly expensive, right? Like the, the, even even a very entry level PC gaming build is like a probably like a thousand you know dollars that would acceptable get build, and that's still a lot more than consoles, right? So those are the things we think about, like how do we solve for those problems too. Right? Mm -hmm. Are you looking into cloud gaming services as well? Because when, you know, like Project uh, Microsoft X Cloud yeah. or Amazon Luna and all yeah. those, those services, which are meant uh, to make the, the traditional uh, PC um, not that important anymore because people can play on every screen that has an internet connection. Do you see this as a threat or as a chance as well? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think it. I don't think it's as it's a threat. Mm -hmm. um, I think anything that enables more people to get into like what PC gaming or core gaming is is a good thing, um, because then hopefully eventually one day they get down to wanting to buy a PC, build a PC, whatever. I see those as potential customers. Um, I think the challenge with cloud gaming is that it's not really PC gaming, right? Cloud gaming is like it's it's a very controlled in, environment you know so um it's certainly things i've thought about right like how do you and get people a pc for a lower cost maybe it's through a cloud but i feel like you have to offer something that's more of a complete solution than just 
just gaming, right? Because that's one of the value props of PC gaming is that PC allows you to do a lot of other things beyond just uh, gaming. Oh, very much so. That's how I got into PC gaming as well, how my parents allowed it. Because, I, yeah, I can do my homework on this PC, you know? I, w I will be playing uh, banned shooter games as well, but you don't have to know about that. Yeah. I'll just I'll be doing my homework. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially nowadays, I think, just because so much of the, the content on consoles are also on PC. Yeah, yeah, truly so. It's become a way stronger platform than it was even 20 years ago. Um, and uh, many people wouldn't have expected that, but I'm glad it yeah, happened who, that way. Yeah, who would have thought, like, we could have God of War on PC gaming, which is like... Exactly, even never Sony. That. Yeah. yeah. Now, if Nintendo would be opening up yeah. as well, we would have everything. <laughs> that, would be the, that would be the dream. That would be the dream, for <laughs> that sure. That would be the dream. Yeah. So if you had... Uh, we have a Dragon Ball actually yes. here yeah. in our studio setup. If you had six more, if you had seven Dragon Balls yeah. and could wish for <laughs> anything in the world, what would you wish for for the next 20 years of NCXT? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm not going to wish something for NZXT because, uh, I mean, that's, uh, I think, and what NZXT will get will be the result of, like, the, what we put in. Um, but I, I personally wish it was gamers didn't have to have so many platforms just to play the games. You know, like, I was, like, one of those gamers who had, like, because I love games so much, I, I like the Nintendo platform, I had the Sony platform, I had the Microsoft platform, and then I had the PC, and then, like, like the Rock Band, you know, like, it's, like, and you had to have so much hardware that off that had so much overlapping you know technology mm -hmm. within them just to play the content because the content were all gated behind these you know walled off gardens and i understand why that exists but it would be wouldn't it be nice if there was just like one platform we could play all our games on and we don't have to worry about all the hardware restrictions and stuff like that right oh absolutely that's a beautiful wish which concludes our interview at yeah. this point johnny yeah. thank thanks. you so much it was great okay thanks so much <laughs> for having me yeah Thank you.